Hello everyone, welcome to Razor Aerospace and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I have not forgotten about Kerbal Space Program 1. I have been doing work on it while doing all the KSP2 videos. And in this video, I present preparations for To Mars and Beyond Season 2. In Season 1, it was in KSP 1.8.1, and I need to check things out in 1.12. This is the same save. And so we need to make sure that our vehicles are in the proper places, and things generally work the way they should. Although we can't check everything, of course. Now, for those who didn't see To Mars and Beyond Season 1, uh, we basically sent a ship over to Mars orbit and brought back. It had Kerbals in, but it wasn't too complicated and we didn't make any landings. So, you're not, not missing out about too much, but the sort of premise of that was that we were using this, the Orion carrier plane. Uh, it is a plane like this, and it has nine sort of... Uh, less complicated Raptor engines. I call them the Rex engines, uh, as after Tyrannosaurus Rex instead of Raptors. Uh, but they have less chamber pressure, so they're not quite as uh, high performance as Raptor engines. But there's still methane oxygen engines in there, nine of them on the tail. And we were using this Orion carrier plane as our first stage, and then there's this other recoverable second stage here. And we used vari a variety of other second stages to do the work. Uh, some of them, the Hydrolox ones, were not recoverable. This is a Methlox recoverable second stage. That's why it's shaped the way it is. And the payload is in the fairing. This is an NTP tank for our transfer vessel. So we need to check out whether this is all okay, and then we will check out other things, uh, including the ship that we sent to Mars and brought back. We'll see that's still there. Uh, we might want to refit it or we might just junk it and decide to go another way. We already have a second ship under construction. And now in this series, in the second season, I don't intend to exclusively use the Orion carrier plane. I think I demonstrated that that was reasonably possible, but I'm not going to stick necessarily to that. But we'll see. Uh, let's test launch this first, just for the heck of it. Okay, we are launching from my launch site at Tampico. You can see the city that I had placed over there and we will see if we can uh, get on a good trajectory for the Bahamas. So the Ryan Carrier plane is supposed to launch the payload and the payload will continue on to orbit, but it itself would land at the Bahamas runway over here. Uh, previously, we had been launching out of Brownsville and landing at Cape Canaveral, but the Ryan Carrier plane always tended to overshoot that. So yeah, we won't follow the Ryan carrier plane down for this one. We'll just check that the payload gets to orbit all nice and neat and that there aren't any weird effects. I'm thinking especially of the plumes in this version, but I think they'll be all right. Oh, my throttle's not working today. All right, and go. I always have to remember to aim camera at the thing though. Okay, so we're going up. Nothing too surprising for now. Unless you're not familiar with the series, then this is all new. The Orion carrier plane is called that because it was supposed to carry the Orion 3 space plane from 2001 A Space Odyssey. Though technically I think it was supposed to be horizontal on a rocket sled that they launched with. But I feel like this is probably a little bit better actually than the original plan. I'm not a big fan of rocket sleds. Though they are reusable. Uh, in case it's not clear, this was modeled by me in Blender and everything. And the stats of the engines and everything were explained in Season 1. Everything is suitably realistic. You can sort of see the city over there. One thing I'm examining is the look of everything to make sure it still looks good with the right sort of ambiance. I have a post-processing mod, the KS3P, which isn't technically compatible with 1.12, but doesn't seem to be doing anything too bad. I had trouble with um, the Textures Unlimited version, uh, TUFX, with some parts, so I decided not to use that. Oh, we have comms, hold on. Uh, we, we're not doing comms in this series, so let me just turn that off. Okay, we're going to have to roll. I was a little bit too slow in turning this time. Somebody pointed out that you can do the roll in other steps, but this thing is very finicky when it comes to roll, and I should have switched off some engines. 
So it's best not to do any sort of large steps with it. It's just better to just go one degree at a time. And at 4,000 meters per second we cut off. Okay, a little bit too fast there. Separation. Switch. And make sure we control from here. Prograde. Bearings off. Bearings off. And ignition. Okay, so this is one of our nuclear thermal propulsion tanks, but that's one thing that I might be changing. Um, the way this is, is completely integrated. It's based on a NASA plan, and it has the integrated RCS and everything, but I might want to disintegrate, but <laughs> that's not a good way to put it. Uh, I, I feel like I should actually separate off all the, all the bits and have just a tank and then a service module section that's separate. Even though it's nice to have everything as one part for performance sake, I think it would be more flexible that way. Uh, it's constantly telling me the wrong delta V there, but we have the delta V, it looks like. And for this to re-enter, we'll test re-entry as well. Okay, we are passing Florida. There's Cuba over there. And we are right over to Bahamas. In fact, our landing site is here, though it's not visible right now at this site. Okay, that is the payload in orbit. Oil off check tank. Okay. Probe. All right, so it'll just be a boil off check tank. And we will bring this back down. Unfortunately, the Orion carrier plane we just launched will have met its demise in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, but we'll check that out next. We can't add this to our existing ship because we never lined up with the Joplin, which is the ship that we had under construction. If we had, we could have docked that, uh, docked this to that. And we could use that as a boil-off checkout system anyway, but we'll have this arrangement. Okay, deorbiting. These are meant to be just generic methane oxygen engines of 250 kilonewtons. Oh, I need to get rid of the adapter section and we need to go retrograde. So we the one disposable part is the adapter here, which covers the heat shield. Well, and I guess the fairings are also disposable. Okay, we've got re-entry heating, and we are basically just north of our Tampico base. I think we'll be splashing down in the Gulf of Mexico. So, not bad planning here. One thing I needed to check is whether anything about heating has changed in the game between the versions, especially with the heat shields. And we have some ablation going on, but it's nothing too surprising. I can see the Brownsville area, but not the Tampico area. I might have to change the range of the Tampico area here. I thought about having a covering that would totally envelop the engines before splashdown, but I decided that this was sufficient for now. And the waters of KSB-1, with scatter and all that business. All right. Well, let's recover this. If it stops bouncing. Before we get to testing the Orion carry plane's landing, which I've done before in previous videos, but I want to do it in this save and in this situation. And this is a different install than the previous installs I tested it out at, even though I had tested it in 1.12. This install is peculiar. It has the mods that were from 1.8.1, though updated, of course. And so I just wanted to make sure everything is working out since it's our primary system, though in this uh, series in Season 2 we'll use other systems as well. Uh, but before we get to that, I am going to check out the St. Louis, which is the ship that we sent to Mars and had recaptured into Earth orbit. You can see it's in a high orbit. Uh, that's to keep it sort of, well, it was supposed to keep out of the radiation belts, but 
I think it's a little bit low on the periapsis side. Well, 32,000 kilometers might be high enough. But yeah, we are not using Kerbalism because that creates other complications. But in principle, I'll think about the radiation real hard. Um, let's put it that way. Now let's take a look at the St. Louis. So this went into Mars orbit and came back. It is a combination of nuclear engines. We have these NASA NTP Architecture 2019 engines, which are based on NASA stats for their nuclear thermal propulsion system. And then ion engines. We've got two banks of 10 ion engines apiece. And these are ion unit for Mars uh, based on a part from Lackluster Labs. And then mostly except for the solar panels and radiators, the rest of this is my parts. Oh, and the antennae. So the rest of it is my parts. So you recognize the NTP tank, now completely out of fuel after its mission. And we're hoping that boil off is okay in this version. But we also have some fuel back here as well as the xenon gas for the, uh, the ion engines. And we have a truss here that hopefully in the next iteration of this we will not have. And then an endurance supply module and the habitat. Now the habitat was a pass-through habitat with an interior where Kerbals could go into it and sort of like live in it. But it was really messy. And so I have decided to make an alternate sort of situation which will take into account the location of the actual supplies, the food, water, and oxygen inside the hab while not making it quite so messy. So this all looks good. Let's take a look at the alternate hab that I've cooked up in the VAB. So the forward part of the habitat is admittedly a little bit goofy looking in this case, and that was sort of deliberate. I wanted something that was sort of 2001 Space Odyssey Discovery 1, but mixed with a little bit of the spirit of Red Dwarf and Orville. Uh, so uh, it's got a smiley face. It's called a Yaruki. Uh, that means motivation, basically. It is sort of, uh, if you've got a rover called Perseverance, well, we've got a ship called Motivation. Uh, one thing I didn't entirely approve of with the Discovery 1 was that it seemed to have a separate door for each pod. We have a huge pod bay here, and it's got a big smiley face to open up and let its... Uh, it's, it's very enthusiastic. I, I thought about calling it enthusiasm, but that in Japanese doesn't roll off quite as easily. But, uh, but, but I think I will name another ship enthusiasm. But yes, and uh, this forward door opens as the back door closes. There's two. Uh, this is actually a combination of my pass-through system, which allows the Kerbals to float around in, plus the normal IVA. This block up here is the normal IVA view, actually. That's where the normal cockpit goes. And there's a hatch here where the Kerbals will pop out. Uh, let me demonstrate. We are going to put this on the pad with launch clamps so that I can demonstrate how this all works. Unfortunately, the zero zero point of the model has to be where the cockpit is, where the IV view is. So the center of mass of this had to be manually shifted down in the configuration file. So the center of mass is here right now. I might want to move it a little bit forward looking at it. But yeah, otherwise the zero zero point is here, which is why the launch clamps want to attach there instead of here. As you can see, loaded with supplies, it's about one year's supplies for four Kerbals. Uh, it has a tonnage of 21 tons, and I've literally placed the supplies in there to make sure that there is space. So we have oxygen containers. These blue ones are the water containers. These care packages are the food they take up the appropriate volume. So I have been very diligent about that. Taking a look at the IVA view, it's my normal IVA view. Um, I've used it in many ships, and so the top portion of this is literally wrapped around that, and I've got the raster prop monitor stuff per usual, and they can barely see out the window there. It's not great, but uh, it's serviceable, and of course, uh, when we have Jeb EVA, we check that Jeb can EVA, though uh, it looks like he's facing the wrong way. I should have it facing the opposite direction. But anyway, the point is Jeb can EVA out of that section, and then the rest of the ship will be passed through, which means Jeb can float around in it, including this bit. Uh, we can close the front door, and you can see the when you close the front door, the back 
portion opens because it's now repressurized. And Jeb, if this was in zero G, would be able to float in there and do stuff. But Jeb can just stay in the happy little IV view. So we can use both types of docking port. We can use the pass-through system or we could use the non-pass-through system with this. And yeah, so that's good. But uh, it might, you know, make you wonder, well, do they have to get in a spacesuit every time they pop out of that hatch? That's inconvenient. Well, no, we have another module to attach to this, and let's take a look at that in the VAB. So the other module is a generic level. It's just a floor, and it looks like this. It has another hatch in the back that can be used, but we can... Actually, that's reverse. It should say close when it says open, but... They've got the little sleeping berths with uh, sort of vertically oriented sleeping bags like they have in the ISS. Uh, we've got a treadmill, we've got computers. Uh, we've got some lockers and a little instrument panel just so that they don't have to be in the cockpit to see what's going on. And otherwise we could put more supplies in here. I could have a supply dedicated level or we could have just other things here like a kitchen. I haven't really made a kitchen model yet. We need a kitchen. Uh, but basically this module can go right there. And so when they pop out, they don't have to be, you know, uh, prepared for being in deep space. Uh, this could be completely sealed up and they would be in their little habitat with their sleeping berths and the exercise equipment and everything and float around in here, which is nice and pleasant. So that is the idea. So minor details need to be fixed like the way they're facing when they exit the hatch and the name of open and close. But it has the benefit of being distinct. I wanted a distinctive look to my ship. Uh, I don't know whether it's going to... Uh, it's friendly looking, but you know, I, I might reconsider it after a while. We'll think about that. But fortunately, there's no limit to how many variations of ships I can potentially make. But uh, yeah, after that, we can have like one of these tanks here and have a service, service module like this. And this can be tweak scaled. So it can be a pretty substantial service module. And then we can continue to ship like that with the nuclear thermal propulsion system behind it. So that is an idea. And that is something I'm, I've been working on. But yeah, the reason it has sort of the shape it has up here is because of the cockpit up there. Anyway, still pondering that, but I think that will potentially get some use in the To Mars and Beyond series as the front end of at least one of our ships. So. With that being said, let's try out the Orion Care Plane and see if it can land at the Bahamas or whether I need jet engines for that in this install. Okay, here we are again. This time let me aim camera so that it doesn't sort of jerk up when we release from the launch, launch tower because the launch tower is the majority of the mass here. That's why it's 13,500 tons. That's because of the launch platform. But since the camera follows the center of mass, it will jerk up once we release from that because the center of mass has drastically changed so we can solve that by aiming camera at the Orion carrier plane. So anyway, let's throttle up, SAS on, ignition, and launch. Once again launching out of Tampico. Okay, shutting off engines and rolling. And shut down. Alright, separation. Preparing the pitch. All right, we are in space temporarily. So there's a test of it without any jet engines fitted. I seem to have not action grouped the remaining Rex engines, so I'll manually shut them down. It's possible we can use them for a boost forward. But not much of one. It shows 225 meters per second left. That's another thing. In 1.12, we have residuals. But I had previously tested the Ryan carrier plane uh, to show that it could do its job despite the residuals. The residuals are on the engines. The engines have predicted residuals of 1.11%. Oh, there's Florida right there, there's Cuba, and we're trying to land somewhere around there-ish. Really depends on how the hop goes because we will bounce off the atmosphere. We'll skip off first. Not all the way up to space, but we will skip a bit. We're coming down hard here. 
any other pitch except for 30 and this thing will be in trouble. Just based on testing, we are now getting lift and slowing down dramatically. That's the payload, because we abandoned it. It has the same heat tolerance as the shuttle, but that's more g-forces than I was expecting. I don't really, really like that. So, it can take it, but... I was hoping for less g-forces. We might have to change our trajectory a little bit. Now we can see... The main island of the Bahamas is there, and our runway is at the north end of it. It's always good to see your landing location. Just south of the Florida Keys, coming back down here. Well, it certainly can no longer hold the pitch up. I don't know if we have the ability to glide all the way out there. I'm going to change to atmospheric autopilot now. I think we should try to run some engines. Just the center ones. Well, we should probably sell the fuel down first. We actually have to do that here in the situation. I don't know if we can sell the fuel down. Might have to just dump the fuel to lighten the load. I was supposed to have more than just that one thruster at the top there. Yeah, I don't think I can sell the fuel down. Yep. I'll just dump the fuel. Okay, we no longer have any methane and oxygen. In the hope that that will improve our glide range. As you can see, dry, we're 128 tons, so it's not exactly a light plane. Well, it's nice to have a version of KSP where my joystick works. Well, I think I can get to the island, but I'm not sure I can get to the runway. We can't even see the runway yet. Oh, our terrain has popped in at least. The runway is there. Fortunately, all of this is just one big flat collider. There is no real water there. Okay, maybe I can make it. It's gonna be close. I wonder if the landing gear is going to cause me to stall here. I don't think it's adding too much drag. Maybe I'm even too fast. But, uh, okay. We do have air brakes, but I don't know if they're going to work. Sometimes they don't like to pop out after I deploy the landing gear for some reason. Ooh, oh, I'm, oh, oh no, it's, it's, it's your, ah, I went out of control. Oh no. Ah, uh, so close. Ah. Uh, I don't know. It's got some weird dynamics when it's really slow. can't go too far away from the prograde vector. So close. I mean, in theory, in the hand of a better pilot, it would have landed on the runway, but I didn't quite get to it here. But in principle, the Orion carrier plane would work. It's just in this particular case, I, I messed up. So anyway, I think I'll wrap it up here with that uh, not quite so mount. It's definitely not a KSP-2 explosion there. Uh, we will wrap it up here and we will proceed with the To Mars and Beyond Season 2 series and try to do greater things than we did in the Season 1 series. If you missed Season 1, it's probably not that big a deal. Uh, we just made orbit around Mars and came back. We will do many similar launches and try to achieve greater things in the next season. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.